Hey guys, Johnny here with NitroPlanes.com. Today is going to be the first installment of our FPV series. This series I'll try to cover as much, uh, as much of the FPV world as possible. We'll get into things like which craft to use, uh, which on-screen displays, what equipment should I choose, uh, what do I do with what I got, and how do I expand from there. Uh, but the first part of the series we'll talk about a couple of the safety issues and the vehicles. Uh, starting off with safety. Safety is going to be the biggest and most important part of this, uh, of this field of FPV. You want to make sure you guys use responsibility and use common sense. Don't go out and do things that are going to jeopardize yourself, that are going to put other people at risk, uh, they are going to put the hobby at risk. I want to make sure that safety is emphasized as much as possible. Whenever do, you're doing FPV, you want to make sure that you keep a couple things in mind. Um, always think about the what ifs. What if this happens? What if that happens? You want to think about those different um, scenarios. Uh, what if I'm flying my aircraft and uh, it goes into a failsafe or it loses a battery or I lose juice? You want to think about all those and try to combat those as best as possible. As far as safety goes, I strongly urge you guys do not fly over populated areas. Do not fly over areas that are uh, filled with heavy housing. Do not fly over uh, heavy traffic areas. Don't go uh, hovering over freeways. Don't go um, flying around in you know, large crowds and things like that. I know sometimes you guys want to get those cool shots or uh, you have these events you want to you know, uh, partake in and utilize your FPV. If you're going to do that, try to make sure safety is the number one aspect. If you're going to be flying over heavy crowds, Stay off to the side, so in case the craft goes down, it doesn't hit anybody. Um, if you're going to be flying over uh, houses and things like that, uh, I don't suggest you do because you know different houses uh, can put out different frequencies. It can cause you to do uh, different things. I don't suggest you fly over you know any heavily populated areas. Another thing about it is do not fly over any airports, do not fly near any airports, do not fly anywhere near commercial aircrafts will be flying. Commercial aircrafts have the right of way and they are... Uh, the king of the sky. If you fly over an airport and things like that, you're going to be looking out for a lot of trouble. You're going to be getting yourself into either legal problems or, you know, even worse, you could hurt somebody. So do not fly near any any airplanes or any airports or anywhere that there's commercial traffic. Responsibility is the main key to FPV. If you FPV in a responsible manner, you will get a very rewarding hobby out of it. Um, responsibility is up to each individual user. This aircraft or this vehicle or that plane is basically an extension of yourself. When you're sitting there with these goggles or a monitor on and you've got a transmitter in your hand, you're basically an extension of yourself. So don't do things that you wouldn't normally do just because you're behind the you know, camera and things like that. So I, I strongly emphasize responsibility. Touching back on the safety issue, if you're going to be getting into FPV and you've never done this before, Try to find somebody in your area that has. See if they can kind of coach you or guide you along your way. It'll make things a lot easier and it'll be a lot cheaper for you in the long run. If you've never flown a craft before, don't think just because you see it on TV or you see people doing it or you see these really cool videos that, hey, that's pretty simple. I can fly a plane. I can drive a car. I could fly a hexacopter or a quadcopter. It's not that easy. It's a whole different field. You're basically controlling something that you're not seeing. You're controlling it based off inputs. And flying an airplane up in the air line of sight may look really easy and you could be really good at it, but once you get behind the goggles, it becomes a whole different world. It's a very rewarding world, but it's a whole different world. So I strongly urge you guys to do that in a responsible manner. Uh, have a co-pilot there. Have somebody there that knows how to fly the craft. If you uh, run into any video glitches or things like that, have somebody there that can take the transmitter from you and has a line of sight visual of the craft or vehicle or uh, airplane, whatever you have uh, in the air. Make sure that somebody's there to watch it and, and that way they can take control of it. Um, also, setting up your equipment. Setting up your equipment is a very important part of uh, FPV. You have to rely on your equipment. If you're going to be flying out a certain distance and you don't have visual sight of the aircraft, you want to rely on your equipment. You want to make sure your equipment does what it needs to do. So I strongly suggest don't skimp out on parts. If you, know, you can get a little bit better part for a couple bucks more, I would strongly suggest you get the better part. Uh, as far as servos, ESCs, things like that, use things that are proven. If you decide you want to go into scratch built and things like that, that's perfectly fine. Just make sure you trust your equipment because if you're going to be flying out, you want to make sure that equipment can come back. So we've got safety covered and responsibility covered. That's up to the individual user. Let's move on to the next section. 
Choosing your platform has a lot of different variables and a lot of different uh, things to consider. First thing I would suggest is figure out your goal. What is your goal in FPV? What do you like to do? What would you like to do with FPV? What do you want FPV to do for you? Are you into the aerial photography aspect of it where you want to uh, get some really cool and unique shots? Um, do you want to get into uh, maybe mapping or uh, small areas, a uh, viewing of small areas or things like that? You might want to choose a multi-copter platform. Do you want to use it for exploration of the ground or the water? Do you want to, you know, drive around your neighborhood and, you know, explore and uh, check out all the little crevices and things like that? You may want to choose a ground vehicle. Or do you want to get some uh, long range or do you want to get up in the air kind of high and just fly around and you want to enjoy the uh, bird's eye view or do you want to make yourself feel like you're flying a real airplane? You may go with a aircraft or a, uh, a plane or a fixed wing as we call it. There's many different applications and there's, very, there's many different vehicles you can choose. Choosing your vehicle also uh, limits and restricts certain aspects of the field. So if you're going with like a multi-copter here, you have small and very limited real estate to put your equipment. So you've got to pretty much figure out different combinations of putting your equipment because when you're in FPV, you have to remember you have signals transmitting and receiving and you wanna make sure those signals do not conflict with each other. And separation is key. So when you're on a uh, multi-copter, you wanna to try to figure out the best combination of uh, where do I put my camera? Where do I put my transmitter? Where do I put my receiver? Uh, what autopilot system am I gonna use? Um, going into the, a little bit into the autopilot systems is they can be a very, very good asset to your FPV uh, flying. Uh, so make sure you guys pick a good um, uh, flight controller and we'll get into that in a different segment of this series. So again, going back to the multi-copter, what do you want that multi-copter to do? Do you care about just simple videos? Um, do you want to just use your multi-copter just to get those different angled shots? You can go with something smaller like this. Do you want to have that stable platform or do you, uh, do you want to get into maybe showing the attitude of the aircraft? You can go with the gimbal and you know there's so many different possibilities of when you go with a multi-copter. Moving on to a ground vehicle, do I want to uh, have something big and bulky that can, you know, crawl over different spaces and you want to get into different crevices? You've got yourself a ground vehicle. You can go with a small rock crawler, big rock crawler, you can go with a fast rock crawler, you can go with a fast short course truck and just kind of feel like you're in the, uh, the races with the uh, big short course trucks or you can go with the on-road car you can maybe drift FPV I mean there's so many different possibilities the great thing about ground FPV is you don't have to worry about something falling from the sky you don't have to worry about uh, controlling that uh, pitch axis or that uh, altitude so if a battery goes dead you're gonna be hunting on the ground for a vehicle and you're not worried about an aircraft falling on a crowd of people or falling into a building or falling somewhere out you don't have to worry about the recovery aspect of it um, that's the great thing about getting into FPV with cars. Moving on to FPV with an aircraft or a fixed wing, it kind of opens up quite a bit more possibilities. Uh, you can now get into a little bit longer range. I mean, I'm sure you could do long range with the multi-copters, but you're limited to battery life. Uh, aircrafts have, uh, airplanes, fixed wings have the lift from the wings, so you could do a little bit of gliding and things like that. You tend to get a little bit more higher in altitude and of that nature. With an aircraft, with the, with the airplane aircraft, you can have a little more real estate. So you can fit all your gear, you know, in the canopy or wherever you need to. You can have better separation with, say, your video transmitter and your receiver. You know, you've got more places to, to work with. But you have to remember on a fixed wing airplane, just because it flies great like this, once you load it down with heavy FPV gear, you're going to change the flight characteristics of the plane. You always want to remember your CG. You always want to remember the wing loading of your aircraft, your battery size, capacity, things like that. So once you've figured out your craft and your vehicle, whichever one you want to choose, then you've got a whole bunch of different equipment. What do I buy? What gear do I need? What do I need for display? And there's a whole different possibilities of that, and we'll get, on, we'll get into that in the next section of this video. I'm Johnny with NitroPlanes.com. I want to thank you guys for watching and tuning in. Uh, there will be many, many episodes coming in this series, and uh, we'll have a lot of really cool um, aspects of FPV that we'll touch on. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the episodes. Thanks for watching.
getting into your equipment. Do you want to go with this frequency or that frequency? Do you want to use a monitor? Do you want to use goggles? Uh, well, I'll try to touch and cover the pros and cons of each different frequency and how to implement them into